Hello, hello. Welcome again to the All In Podcast with Nate Pale. Uh, my guest today is Neil Falora. Uh, Neil is a serial entrepreneur, speaker, relationship mentor, life healer. Neil's coaching work has been featured in several national TV spots, Unfair Advantage Live, Huffington Post, Walk the Talk Speaker, uh, and a multitude of other podcasts with featured names like Gary Vaynerchuk and Seth Godin. He's also featured in a book about public speaking. His clients are intuitive, heart-centric, visionaries, high net worth leaders, and celebrities. Neil teaches people how to master their internal world so their external world is simple. Neil stands for radical change for his clients through the ignition of their divine creative center. And he takes his 10-year background in life coaching and brain science to help his clients with the Brain Warrior Method. Welcome to the show, Neil. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing today. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad, uh, glad you're able to join me and I'm um, excited to sh get into your story. And so part of your your um, bio that I, I chose not to read um, because I wanted to get you to explain it a bit more in your own words. So you were, um, you know, you had a career, you were working for a company, doing really well, and you found yourself challenged. Uh, you're bedridden for six years. Can you walk us through that story of how your life was going along and then what inspired you to, to make that change and take you to where you're at now? Absolutely. That's a, it's a great question. And I would dial it back just slightly to say is that I've always lived as this really um, energetically in touch, empathic guy who was always sourcing pe people who needed help, who needed counsel. And even growing up in my own household, which was very physically and mentally um, frictional, I found myself sort of being the ad hoc spouse and I was reading relationship articles at a young age. But what I didn't know that I was doing across all of these experiences, even into the corporate world, is that I was shouldering, I was in training a lot of what was going on in my life, in my tissues. And we we all have this happen. This this kind of knowledge goes back thousands of years to this ideas of even energy centers or chakras or chi in the body. And so after I got out of medical school and, and leapt into um, uh, the corporate career where I was running sort of business within an 80,000 person business, I um, married my wife at that time and she gave me the space to finally take a break and heal. And I, after chasing a paycheck and having the hundred thousand blah, 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 with a hundred thousand expense account and all those things and a sales team, I was just like, I can't do this. I need to pursue my dreams, but I, I don't want to show my kids that, but I want to heal. And I had done a lot of life coaching and when I, at the, Nate, at the time when I was out on the road doing all this business development stuff, I helped my clients get different jobs, lose weight, get in and out of relationships, get out of money problems, you know, get out of limited thinking and, and or toxic work environments. And so, but it was time for me now to figure out the next level, which was nothing in the medical system was helping me. I had 120 symptoms. I had 95 more pounds on me. Uh, I went to the end of my block, Nate, and I literally didn't know where I was or why I was there. I thought I was going into early stage dementia. I was like, this is, this is nuts, but it's the, it's the intuitive voice. It's the higher self that just kept pushing me. There's, there's gotta be something else. And I started discovering in these WhatsApp groups and in these little forums of people <laughs> taking their brain and using their brain to rewire, to have to create a different relationship with their body and their brain together. And so that allowed me to then start down this journey. And I started collecting these techniques over six years and the weight started coming off and the many of the symptoms started to disappear. And what I was noticing is that I was developing a, a relationship with my, with my higher self and my body and the energetics of my body in a way that was helping me break through not just physical symptoms, but all of these physical symptoms have a, a in relation to our belief system and our emotional system. And I got really good at using the cryptocurrency of our emotions, which is the entire currency of our body and our brain. And that pulled me out of that, that funk. I'm still on this journey because as any journey, it's never ending, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's interesting you called it cryptocurrency. Um, 
you know, but it's true. Like that, that's really where it's at. This, this energy at its core is what makes us who we are. It gives us the power and the strength to do what we need to do. Um, you know, money is just essentially a construct to, to, to exchange services rendered for, 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 for stuff. And, and that's really what we're doing is exchanging energy. Um, how did you realize that like you, you, you took this technology learned for yourself and then you decided you wanted to go out and, and teach the world about this and help other, other people discover it within themselves and, and, uh, heal, get better, become the best version of themselves possible. You know, it, and again, to, to peel it back a little bit, I remember at a really young age watching Star Wars and and that force that people were using. This is would be a theme in my life. I'm like, I just knew at five that that's real. I wasn't totally convinced that we can maybe necessarily move things with our mind, but I knew that there was some invisible energy, something that was around us. And as I started to experience these moments of flow where I'd experienced these moments of connectedness with things around me in a way that I didn't really know how to describe is let's be honest, tribally, Nate's when's the last time that somebody sat you down and go, here's how I want you to understand your connectedness to all things, um, your emotional self and your energetic body. Uh, and then let me give you the sex talk, by the way, too. <laughs> That never happens. Never. It never, it never happened. Even my sex doc was so, my dad was a physiologist, geneticist, and it was so piss poor. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is, is that, is that, so I had it, I had it spiritually in me um, for a long time. And I've spent a lot of my life observing human behavior and then reflecting back, not like where, how am I equally as, how am I equally as blind? How am I equally as moronic as I think somebody else is? Because I know that I am. And what is it that I'm missing that I'm totally blind to? So, and 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 having my feet dabbled in the quantum for a long time as well, I started putting all these things together. And it was just like, I've always known since I was about five that I have something to say. I have something to share because I would get these downloads. I would get, the, when I'd write a speech or do a talk, it would just come through me and um, or when I'm sitting in front of somebody and they're like, I need some help. And how many times I've been across somebody who said, you changed my life today. And I don't even say that as like, oh, I'm trying to be boastful. I'm saying that as I coach my clients, claim your gifts. If this is your gift, claim it, because if you don't claim it, your other people are suffering because they don't get to experience it. And so I it's been in it's really been in my bones this whole time to know that and to and I have these regular visualizations of standing in front of the UN talking to them about like the the turmoil inside of us and how that's creating a much more violent and zero sum world. And we we need to get together as a species to to rein that in and to help each other understand our mutual greatness. That's that's amazing you're talking about knowing your purpose since you were young or, or feeling it at least and throughout my life i've i felt called i felt compelled to do bigger things and and i i didn't know what they were um and and but then i look look back on my life there's like things that mistakes i made that could have turned out drastically different they could have uh seriously hurt somebody they could have seriously hurt myself they could have ended my life that could have ended somebody else's life. And I think that, that they didn't end the way they did because there's, there was something else that, that I was called to do that was bigger than me, but I never could figure out like what that was, that gift. And just like, mm -hmm. you know, you're kind of waiting for it to reveal itself or to show up in your life or to it, to kind of make sense or to feel like it comes naturally. And over the last year, I realized that to find this gift, I was going to need to start taking steps towards it, knowing that along the way I was going to meet people. I was going to be exposed to ideas, different opportunities that would just shape this gift that you're talking about and and be able to impact some people. And so along the way, and, I, and, and I've kind of learned too, like your gift, you don't just like find it and then there it is, but it's a continuous journey. Like it, it evolves and you get better with it. And yeah. some of my gift um, would be helping others find their their journey, helping others be inspired that like, mm -hmm. if they don't, they don't know what they should do, just be like, hey, you don't need to know. Just 
start. Just like walk out the door, see what happens. If you feel like going left, go left. If you like going right, go right. Mm-hmm. But whichever way you go, you're going to come across other people along this journey that are going to redirect you where you need to go. And if you don't have the answers, don't worry about it because those answers tend to show up. You know, they, they appear in your life. But when you're just sitting on there holding on to it, like, oh, I got to figure this out before I do it you're never going to get it right. And, and to me, like it, it's part of figuring that out and going through that journey. It, was that similar to you? Were you pretty aware of what your gift was or did you have to take your own journey to start discovering what it was, finding your voice and then figuring out a way that you felt comfortable sharing it with the world? So it was, it was so much of so much turns and twists and turmoil and missed identification and re-identification and clarity then that then, then was in, met with another layer of of confusion because again um, many of the strifes that we go to because we don't live in tribes we don't live tribally where we can counsel and reflect on each other because leaders don't need a compass they need a mirror it, it's well known i mean if you watch a tv show you 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 lose your subconscious body, you, which is your mind, and you become the movie. You become the drama or the action just in, in the way in which if you have somebody standing in front of you and they're just speaking into you about and reflecting into you about who you are and having more of those set points. But I love so much about what you said about, and I, I say to myself because I changed this over the years, action over inspiration. And it's and we believe that it, we want to ask the questions, but but what we don't understand is that we must go out and do the action to bear the proof to help us understand where the next where the next turn comes from and in our society where still to this day that your mistakes and your follies and your less thans and because of all the comparison of social media we don't want to go out and do the things unless we're sure of it and we certainly don't want to broadcast that we're doing it um not because not because we we um are are afraid of failing Um, the issue is is not just because we're afraid of failing it's it's the fact that we we teach each other that if you that the emotions of struggle and sadness or remorse or um, failure are something that we want to escape from we're not escaping from the failure we're escaping from the from the need to not feel those things instead of making it acceptable to feel them and then just picking yourself back up and move again. When my kids, I have five-year-old um, boy-girl twins and I do a lot of this mindset stuff with them and they'll struggle with something. And they're like, dad, I can't do it. I'm like, first of all, in the floor family, what do we say? I can do it. I said, secondly, it's like, keep struggling, keep struggling. It's okay to struggle. Tell yourself it's okay. Say, take a breath and tell your body it's okay to struggle. Again, that lesson isn't taught either, right? It's, it's mm-hmm. not okay. Well, you, you, you should just open up a business and three months later on Instagram, you have your Lamborghini. <laughs> I wish it was so simple, but you know, you're talking about that struggle in when, when I've had like a, re- a revelation over the last few years is like, it, every time you struggled in the past, at least for me in the past, what felt like the worst thing in my life led to other things that are irreplaceable. So so if you go back through and you go, hey, what do I have chosen for that not to have happened? And then you go, okay, well, what would happen if I that didn't happen? That experience didn't happen. Well, it didn't lead me to this, didn't lead me to that, didn't lead me to this. And all of a sudden you go, well, crap, I don't have my kids. And like, so you go like, I have to go through these bad experiences to get, get to the good stuff. They're neither bad nor good, they're just experiences, but like there's the struggle. And so when you start feeling those, um, those those parts where you where you are struggle and I started going like get into it like enjoy that struggle enjoy the pain of it because it you're gonna go through it regardless like just write it out and know that on the on the other side of the coin is going to be a better experience that you're looking forward to it's it's just the ebb and flow and if everything was just one level right everything was all high then that's your new baseline. And then that becomes a plateau and then you have no ups and downs from there. So then it's, it's boring and and it's, you know, it's not feeling, it's not experiencing what life has to offer. And, um, you know, you, you got to start welcoming that struggle a little bit almost. 
I, I, I loved what you said about embracing or enjoying the pain. And, and I've had that in my life when my, when I was really down in it, when my ass was just stinging and all of the things were falling apart, I had a moment of grace where I'm like, wow, this hurts so good. I mean, the fact that I can feel the breadth and depth of this pain right now shows the degree to which I'm alive. Like I, I can, I mean, it, 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 it's, it smarts, you know, beyond all recognition and, you know, being able to observe that, uh, to being able to take in that, but look at like even how we raise our kids. And, and this is not like parenting advice, but I'm just saying in general, um, a lot of times what, what happens is as soon as they have a fall or as soon as they're crying, what do we do? We rush over and pick them up. And I'm not saying that you should leave a baby crying forever, but we teach people, even like if you see somebody crying or suffering, what's the first thing we, we run over and tell them that they're there, they're, it's okay, it's okay. And we try to, we try to squelch their emotional experience instead of letting them have the experience even in the way in which we empathize. Most of the empathy we do is empathy blocking. You know, I have a book on that. You know, if you just do X or Y or Z, and that's not what people need. People need these few things. I hear you, I see you, or I'm so glad you shared that with me, right? So mm -hmm. they're free to have their experience and move through it rather than us keep reaffirming, oh, you shouldn't have that experience. Try to make it go away as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we need those experiences. They shape us. Now, a lot of times when you're a coach, it's easier to tell other people what to do. It, it, it's you're, you're away from it. You're not too close to it. So, okay, these are the things you need to do to go through it. But what do you personally do on the days you're not feeling it where you're thinking, maybe I'm on the wrong path. Maybe this isn't the right thing. Maybe this struggle is, is this struggle a sign of of resistance because I shouldn't be going on this path or a struggle of resistance because it's testing my resolve to continue going. Yeah. And, and it's such a timely question because one of the things that I'm doing as, as I come through my own healing is, is, you know, my, my brain warrior, the, the brand is about rewiring all the levels of mind in the body, not just the brain, but it's also meant to be the toolbox of many things. So what I tell a lot of my clients, which I'm subject to as well, is that when we get into a place where we're struggling, we get into a cortisol response. The cortisol acts on this brain, part of the brain called the hippocampus, and all that does is narrow your focus and it fragments your brain. It doesn't work, it doesn't work as one unit, it works as many units, unfortunately. So we get amnesic about what are our tools about what we can use. We get amnesic about that we can even get out of this. Everything, our whole world seems to be these last three days or two weeks or whatever has been going on. So for me, it's about having a set of tools that's ready and available, which I can dip into. It's about having confidants, you know, people that, you know, I can call on or that have similar vibration. I mean, the reason that we're talking and that you and I, we were in a group together, but it was just the things that you said and the way you were saying them. I'm like, this dude is somebody I want to hang out with. He's, he's lit mm -hmm. up. He's a different kind of thinker, but it's having, so those are the kinds of things, having the right kind of people and the right kind of tools in my life and um, having, having, having some de-escalation protocols, whether that's havening or, or whether that's a, emotional freedom technique or visualizing or going into a meditation when I don't, when I want to do it the least. Cause I'll tell you this from a neuroplastic standpoint, when we're the most triggered is the chance we have the most opportunity to make the most new wires and the most new behaviors. And so it's, it's also having those things. So I have a place in my closet. It's always set up with a, with a, with a, I loud speaker where I can go in and I can instantly get into a small meditation, right? But if I don't have those things ready, it's like it's like having your lunch box, making your lunch every day. I don't have those ready, then I just stay in my shit and it keeps recycling. Yeah, that's I I, I think that's fantastic. And you talked a little bit about the frequency, and that happens to me a lot. Like as as I've been um, actively growing my network and connecting with new people. I was worried like I'd come across a lot of um, negativity, the trolls and the usual stuff that's on the internet. And instead I keep bringing more people in that benefit me knowing, like they, they inspire me to greater action. They might be a mentor, they might be an advocate, they just might be a supporter. And I've also learned that the more I show up, even though sometimes I don't feel like 
I'm making a difference. People come back and they, they do say this stuff like, hey, you inspired me to do something because I saw you doing it. I, I continue to do it. Um, so I think that frequency is right there. Like when we start getting on the right frequency, we start attracting the people we need. And when we do go through a struggle, like, oh, how am I going to ever get through this? Chances are somebody else shows up and helps us through it. They, they give us the right piece of advice. Maybe it's, it's, a, it's a quote we see. Maybe it's a song on the radio, but th that shows up and we're able to uh, uh, move past it. Now, you talked a little bit about the brain warrior. So I'd like to have you expand a little bit more of what is the brain warrior and um, what do you do when you work with people? Yes. Thank you for asking. So the Brain Warrior game, again, just to, to brief, briefly recap, it came out of this idea that when I was, um, my dad and I had a really different kind of relationship and he would talk to me about these ideas of human behavior and so forth. And we'd have these really um, sometimes like explosive conversations in my head. I would get these highs and we were talking about how we want to be the master of our brain, not the brain be the master. So I remember writing on a piece of paper, I am the master um, at a young age, right? And and really, but it wouldn't be till many decades later where I'd really rope that in. And so once I started to really rewire some things in my brain and and this phenomenon comes from a, from a, this is not just like the woo woo out there. There is so much science, which we won't go into here, but the short story is neurons that fire together, wire together. And that's why you can remember something that's deeply gratifying or deeply traumatic and your frontal brain and your, in your emotional brain, wire a, create a, a software program that if repeated over time is then downloaded into our subconscious. So 95% of how you're going to react in any situation by the time you're 30 years old is on autopilot. We are mostly on running on subconscious programs, not at free will. And so for me, what I want is I want what I want and what most of my clients want, even though they don't come and say that, is they want freedom. We want the freedom to do what we want to do when we want to do it. And getting free of those programs is the brain warrior's edict. Well, then I started discovering through, again, Yale, Harvard, different kinds of scientists and all the shamans and people who have studied chakra energies that this, this these levels of mind are at all, all levels of mind. Even if you read Bruce Lipton's book, he said any tissue that can send out signal and collect information has the capacity for memory. Heart transplant, um, lung transplant, liver transplant patients having characteristics and memories so much so that they could solve a crime um, when they were getting donor organ tissues, right? So we know that these are entrained in our bodies. So what I do with people is I take, you know, my primary clients are visionaries, celebrities, um, high profile clients that, that want their most important relationships to be the most rewarding relationships without the drama. And I take them through a process that takes them from where most people are either in overwhelm or anxiety or, um, or just have too much on their plate and move them through to getting into a process of flow and then finally releasing um, because they have three things that are draining their time, their attention, their, their, their time, their attention, and their, then their power are things that are just being constantly drained all the time. So then I take them through a series of exercises. A lot of what I do is visually based, um, but it could be, like I said, some of the other, the havening, the, the emotional freedom technique. And, and a lot of what I do is I teach people how to think differently because they're caught up in their loops and they have no subjective, they have no objective frame of reference because we're all bathed in these layers of, of subjective emotional programming. And most adults are emotionally constipated. And I tell you can tell somebody to do a visual, but they'll never do it in the way in which it produces change because they have no idea how to access their emotions. So I teach them how to get back in touch with their emotions and create an experience in the brain that's so real that it's the same as what was happening out here. To the brain, it doesn't matter if it's happening out here or happen in here. Then this is why our traumas can can rescar us thousands and thousands of time over. Mm -hmm. and, and you're working with the, your clients one on one. Is this something that like how often do they need to spend time with you um, to start seeing uh, improvements and start seeing some breakthroughs? Right. I mean, I can because I've done what I've done and I, I'm very high energy. I, I, I focus on a lot of high energy. I work on my energy a lot. Sometimes we can get people 
getting things changed in the first couple of weeks, but to integrate it takes about three, three months, but we can get, we can definitely get people, I can get people results and I'm doing this one-on-one, -on -one, that's my high touch, but then I have a mentor mind, which I, I call it mentor mind instead of mastermind because I do something deeply vulnerable on these topics and then we do a 90 minute call and I get about 10 leaders around a table and then we all coach each other. And for me, that's some of the most fun I have, to be honest, Nate, is because the results in that have just, they have blown away my wildest expectations. Like the yeah. things that come, come out of there because people are just, I, I get to them a really raw, authentic place. And then everybody's genius becomes unguarded and we just help each other out. And people have just, I had a lady who was, her husband had just died. She was a realtor. She was stuck. And she's now off in Arizona. She sold everything. And she's doing a startup business out of an RV with her best friend. This is her dream to do this for 15 years, but could never get herself to get there to do it. Just, I won't give all the testimonies, but I love it because it, honestly, it helps me so much too. I get mm -hmm. so much out of it. I get so much out of it. I've, I've found too, like one, when you teach and when you give back, I think that's where you find the most fulfillment, the most learning experience is, 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 is showing you, sharing your knowledge. Um, but also when you combine more people in it. And so sometimes like you think like, oh, well, if, if I'm, if I'm doing a, a collaborative me mentor mind, as you, as you described it, then it's like, it's not necessarily my thing. It's like a collaborative thing, but you're bringing everybody in with their level of expertise, you're facilitating it, but those, those minds together are able to solve more problems than if they were apart or if they were restricted. And that's what I love about these collaborative group things is that it's not about like me telling you what to do or you telling me what to do, but like the ideas flow where our energies start being on the same frequency, they start vibrating and you see things from a different perspective. And, um, it kind of reminds me, oh, this is kind of random that I was thinking about this right now, but we used to have, I used to take this um, entrepreneurship class in, in uh, my MBA course, and they called it convergence and divergence. And so the divergent part was the first thing we did to generate a business idea, which we just threw a lot of stuff at the wall, just like random ideas. Like we'd be in a group and just throw everything out there. Like no idea was, was farcical. And you might have a, a dumb idea and I have a dumb idea, but combined with those two dumb ideas, somebody else has a brilliant idea that was triggered mm -hmm. those dumb ideas. Yeah. And then all of a sudden that makes sense. And so we would throw stuff at the wall and then we'd look and see what, what came out of it. And then we'd converge it back down. We'd say, okay, what made sense? Let's, let's get focused. Let's bring this in. So you take a lot of exterior stuff, just randomness and then focus it back in to, to solve problems. I think that really is what happens when you bring a group of great people together, get them open-minded, especially like you said, dropping their guard and letting letting things happen. So cool stuff. Um, I do want to ask you, what does it mean to you to be all in? Yeah. What does it mean to be all in? I think for me that all in is a place where you are completely surrendered to a vision, to something that you've mapped out clearly and you are not focused on any of the cursed hows, you've just surrendered to it completely. And you're not sitting on your couch just hoping it will come. You're in inspired action. But, you, but you're day to day, you're also not being thrown off by, oh, well, this didn't happen, that didn't happen. Let me let me rephrase that last part. You are you being all in is 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 a surrender to a huge why, and it's being completely married to, you're highly committed to the vision but you have low expectations around it and when i say low expectations what i mean is is that the path in which you get there you have low expectations on how that's going to happen but you're highly committed to 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 the actual end result that's an awesome awesome answer now you talked a bit about the the clients that you work with um but let's dig a little deeper who is that ideal person you want to work with where your energies relate to each other they feel like they're on the same wavelength they come from you know it just makes perfect sense where it doesn't feel like it's it's forced it's your ideal client that you love working with yeah i love to answer this question so for me it's 
what I'm looking for are people who have extraordinary visions. They are people who have uncommon dreams, uncommon conversations, and they are motivated by something while they, they, they can be money motivated and there's nothing wrong with that. It, it, it's the value in which they bring that really, that really fuels that. And they fundamentally understand and believe that it's not the logistics that's going to get them there, that it's, it's how they show up, their mindset, their energy, and how they, and the relationships that they have with other people that make the biggest difference. Um, and that posturing and the normal zero sum game stuff is just, is not going to get the, the cursed house is not going to get them there. So I'm not here to bring on a client and, and then suddenly try to have to convert them that they need to do mindset energy work and meditation actually works. If they need all that convincing, then they're not a client that, that, that at least what I should say is, is that my coaching isn't right for them. Mm -hmm. I, I love your answer. I love the part where you're talking about people that are looking for uncommon conversations and uncommon dreams. Like that, that part resonated with me. So where can people go if they want to get connected to you? Sure. I, I try to keep it simple. So my Instagram is the brain warrior, or you can simply email me at Neil N E A L at the brain warrior.com or my web address is the brain warrior.com. Awesome. That is uh, nice and simple. So that's linked there in the show notes. I encourage everybody to uh, go get connected to Neil. Say hello. If you do reach out and have a conversation with him, let him know you heard about him on the All In podcast with Nate Pale. So thanks again, Neil, for coming on, um, talking mindset and talking, you know, energies and frequencies. And I, I, I love this type of stuff and uh, always enjoy chatting about it. Thank you for yeah. coming on. Yes. Thank you for the privilege and the honor, my friend. This is, this is fun. Thank you. Thank you.